I'd like to introduce the bodhicitta practice of Maitri and Karuna. The actual formal practice of arousing the feeling of Maitri, then letting that radiate out. And in keeping with the three noble principles, I would very sincerely like to make the aspiration that this benefits all of us. And in particular, that something begins to transform in us. And that that transformation leads us from suffering to happiness. And at the most profound level of really beginning to, as a result of this practice, get the notion of what is the root of happiness. What causes it to expand and flower? What causes it to, to grow rather than to decrease? And beginning to get the actual sense in our everyday life at a non-conceptual level, just at the level of our being, of what is it that causes suffering? What is the root of suffering? So that we might be able to speak and act and think, live our lives in a way where Suffering for ourselves and others begins to de-escalate where there's less suffering. I think it's important to realize that we don't evolve alone. These qualities in us, they don't happen in isolation. They happen in relationship to other people. It's love for ourselves and others that causes it to increase. It's compassion for ourselves and others that causes the compassion to increase and the suffering to decrease. It doesn't happen in isolation. And in that regard, I think it's quite inspiring to realize that doing these practices has a sort of the potential of the four-minute mile. That if one person can connect with what is the root of happiness and the root of suffering and begin to live their life that way. If one person can connect with this spark of bodhicitta so that it grows and this capacity to open our minds beyond narrow-mindedness and closed, painfully self-centered views. If even one person can do that to the degree that one person can do that, It makes it easier for the rest of us. So we evolve together. It is like the four-minute mile. To the degree that some people are beginning to get the hang of this, you can count on the fact that many other people all over the globe are beginning to get the hang of this. I've noticed this over the years with my spiritual practice in the community that I would have insights in my meditation very personal, true, transformative insights, genuine, non-conceptual insights, only to find in my discussions with my friends that they were having the same insights. And then to start reading you know, magazine articles and books and things and see that other people were having the same insights. So it works like that. So don't think that your meager attempt to feel love and to feel compassion is wasted to the degree that you even uh, aspire to awaken your good heart, your kind heart, to love and care for others, to be able to have the bravery, actually, to feel the pain of other people, to overcome the fear of feeling the pain that exists in this world. Even your aspiration to do that, your wanting to do that, it has enormous power for the whole uh, human consciousness to evolve. Not just you, not just us in this room, not just people who practice Buddhist meditation, but the whole species. And we could aspire that it also helps the ants and the bees, the fish and the tarantulas and the monkeys and parrots and everybody and all those beings that we are told exist that we don't even perceive them.
that everybody can benefit from this meager, humble beginning of us starting to do this practice. I would also say that it's probably going to be a lot easier for us than maybe it would have been a hundred years ago, even fifty years ago, because of the fact that people have been doing it. And people have been gaining insight from it over the years. And therefore we step into a pool of energy which is already here. We are going to do this Maitri practice, the wish that all beings enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. It's basically just arousing the wish that this could be so, that we could be happy and that others could be happy. Before I present the practice, I'd like to say that what makes these limitless, what makes this uh, friendliness, this love, this Maitri limitless, has to do with us beginning to get the hang of what is the root What is the root cause? What is it that causes happiness and suffering? What is it that would allow for happiness to expand and for suffering to decrease? Traditionally, what is said is that the root of suffering is ignorance and that the root of happiness is the dissolving of ignorance. And if you ask, well, what is this ignorance What are we ignorant of? Ignorant of the true nature of reality. So entrenched in a static way of thinking and perceiving reality. So entrenched in uh, seeing ourselves and others as objects, subject objects, objects that are sort of pitted against each other sense of isolation, sense of solidness of things, static, and that the true nature is of limitlessness in process, fluid, not solid. And uh, most importantly, that we are all part of a flow of energy, a flow, a process, part of the whole. We're not actually isolated. Just as I described how what we do, our little effort here, actually will cause it to be easier for other people. It's all like that. Everything we do is either causing the whole species, all of us, the whole everything, to uh, open more, or we stay in the same holding patterns, if you know what I mean. We stay sort of continually hooked in the same way. So... You could say the whole Buddhist teaching is a contemplation, a study, a meditating upon, trying to get to a real living experience of knowing what causes suffering and what causes happening, to really understand what that ignorance is, not just conceptually, but truly understand it. But it has a lot to do with relaxing our mind, and it has a lot to do with opening our heart. And it is said that these four limitless ones, Maitri and compassion, joy and equanimity, are catalysts for speeding up this process of coming to understand, coming to know, having the insight dawn on what causes suffering and what causes happiness. The important thing, I think, is that Perhaps your insight will grow even more than it is now into the fact that how we usually proceed is like heaping suffering on top of suffering. Because we feel pain, we just seek for pleasure in the wrong places. Because we feel constricted, we look in the wrong places. We're always trying to basically get away from the discomfort. And therefore, it just makes matters worse. We are actually... a a whole species who are have spent centuries, you know, centuries and centuries of getting really good at making matters worse. On the other hand, this is a definitely a time in history where uh, there's a, a real movement towards making matters better, a real movement, global movement towards 
less denseness and more openness, less holding and more opening. On the other hand, it's going the other way too. Both things are happening. So I could probably give, you know, 25 talks on the root of suffering and the root of happiness, and it might not still be part of your living experience. And so a very important point is to continue to contemplate this and just to notice. You can read what the teachings have to say on it, but actually notice in your own experience what words make things better and what words make things worse in terms of suffering. What actions make things worse and what actions make things better. This has enormous power. Just beginning to see our ability to turn that around comes from being able to see how certain things actually make the pain increase and other things cause us to lighten up and open. So at this point I'd like to give the practice. Now it's time for you to get out your two lists. (laughs) And hopefully you have at least one name on each list. One list, if you remember, was a, a list of people that when you thought of them, you felt gratitude. And then the other list was where you already have compassion, that you simply think of this person or this situation and compassion naturally arises. I asked you to do this so that when we start this practice, you've already done some homework on waking up these feelings of gratitude and compassion. And now we will begin the kind of contemplation on this. So the first practice that we'll do is the Maitri practice. And as I say, what makes it limitless is the recognition that we're really wishing for ourselves and others to enjoy the root of happiness, to find out what is the root of happiness, to actually begin to turn things around. So we will begin uh, by, um, you could say, arousing bodhicitta, which is to say, just arousing the wish that we be happy. May I enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And you may feel that right now you don't have a sense of what the root of happiness is, but the whole point is that this is a practice in starting exactly where you are and then gradually beginning to think bigger. And starting exactly where you are is like shut down, closed off as you might be feeling realizing that over time, your capacity to feel will begin to expand. So thinking bigger and feeling bigger as well. As someone said, these practices are sort of stretch your heart and stretch your mind. But what is said is that the essential spark is within all of us. The basic kind heart is in us. And this is like tapping into it, like tapping into a spring. And at the beginning, maybe you just make a tiny hole and just a few little drops are coming out. And then maybe that's all you do is you just make a little hole. And then the force of the water, the force of the living water causes that hole to get bigger and bigger of its own accord until there's just a river of flowing, fresh, good water coming out. So if you can just make a little pinpoint in the narrowness of your heart and mind by doing these practices, you can really trust that you can go from frozen to begin to melt. Something can begin to melt of its own accord. But we do have to make this kind of initial aspiration or if you don't want it to happen, it won't. It has a lot more to overcome. We're going to start the practice with ourselves. Um, This is um, the way that some people teach it. Some people say, oh, well, you're supposed to start with what is easiest. Therefore, you start with yourself. Well, 
I remember presenting this once to someone mm -hmm. and the whole room burst into laughter because for many, many people, the most difficult of all to do the Maitri practice for is oneself. This is extremely helpful to see this and to make this gesture of kindness towards yourself that you start with yourself. The other reason for starting with oneself is that it's said to the degree that you can arouse the wish for yourself to be happy. To that degree, it becomes easier for you to wish for others to be happy in a genuine way, in a really true way. So that it's not just like conceptual, good people wish for others to be happy and therefore you kind of mouth the words. But you don't really activate the feeling of love in you. There's no warmth that actually starts to spill out. So we start with ourselves. And then the second one, we expand it. The idea here is you start with this little pinpoint and then you expand it out, which can be, as people often say, it feels like just mouthing words. It feels completely um, made up. But this is the kind of pretending that is really useful for you. So don't feel like you're being a hypocrite or something. You're not really trying to make yourself feel something. You're just simply <coughs> arousing the thought. And if you do it on a daily basis, you'd be surprised at how the power that arousing this thought has to make something actually genuine begin to happen. So you can feel very cold and very cut off and as if you're just mouthing words, just pretending. But at least during your stay here, give it a fair chance. And then if you can continue for a year with this practice of just experimenting, saying, well, let's just see what happens here. See if something doesn't begin to move and change in you of its own accord, just by your willingness to turn in the direction of even saying the words that you wish for yourself to be happy and you wish others to be happy. Then we move on to the people on our list of people that when we think of them, we automatically feel gratitude. And as I say, this doesn't have to be a person. It can be an animal. A lot of people find that it's their dog or a dog they used to have or a cat they used to have or something that, that they feel this love for in a simple, uncontrived, unintellectual, uncomplicated way. But in any case... The idea here is to get in touch with that genuine feeling of gratitude and love. I'm going to present it this way, of starting with oneself and moving on to the person or the beings or being on your list. But uh, if you wish, when you're doing this yourself, to start with the person on your list, you can do that because the idea is you sort of start with something that you already feel. Do you see what I mean? It's like you start with a, something that's already genuine, that doesn't feel contrived. And the idea is that you spend most of the time working on that. You spend most of the time wishing for this person that you feel gratitude to. You will spend most of our time wishing for them to be happy to enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. If they've uh, died long ago, it doesn't matter. You can still do it for them. They don't have to be alive. The idea of this is that it does benefit others, but the reason it benefits others is because it starts to unlock this uh, frozen quality in your own being and something begins to move and melt. And this is the idea. Love can begin to spread. So first we have to do our best to just feel it at all. Then we move on to a very close friend. Now we may have some complicated feelings about this close friend, but we move on to someone that we really feel is our good friend, and we wish for them to be happy. Uh, may they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And then we move on to a neutral. Someone says, do you like them? They'd say, sure. And, you know, like, but it's not like strong attraction or strong aversion. It's just neutral. 
The teachings always say that most of the people in our lives fit into this category, the neutrals. Then it sounds like science fiction. <laughs> now we'll do it for the neutrals. <laughs> And then we move on to the hardest one, which is the enemy. It's said that uh, it's best not to start with uh, someone you actually hate, someone that you, you resent so much that when you think of them, your whole being closes down, someone who has harmed you in a way that all you really want is revenge. You, you just can't even entertain the thought of even wanting them to be happy. You just want them to suffer because they caused you to suffer. It said it's better not to start with those people because it's too overwhelming. It's asking too much of ourselves. Nevertheless, the unlimited quality of this is as you begin to work with what's workable over time, even these ones that seem impossible to feel, to wish that they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness, that it's spontaneously something begins to shift and change in us not mentally, not forcing it, not pretending. And you should just wait for it to happen like that so that you can trust it and it doesn't feel overwhelming. So when you get to the enemy, I think you can come up with plenty of people that you just feel resentment towards now. Or, you know, maybe just their last rota shift. You know, someone who didn't show up. or So enemy may be kind of a big term, but basically it's someone that you feel negativity towards in some Let's start with kind of a smaller way. Resentment, irritation. And you might say, well, I also like them. You know, it's complicated like that. Well, just zero in on the not liking them part. (laughs) (laughs) And actually, see if you can do this uh, quite paradoxical, ambiguous, very unhuman which is to hold in your heart at the same time the the not liking and then also wishing for them to enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And I'd like to say at this time that what's happened with me with these kind of heart practices, which I, this is my, my main practice of these bodhicitta practices, and what I've noticed is that not only do you become emotionally more able to give, to reach out, to feel more alive emotionally and more interconnected with others. But a lot of insight begins to dawn. It's also with the level of the mind. The mind and heart being so inseparable are actually the same thing. Enormous insight begins to dawn. And what's happened with me, and a lot of people have said the same thing to me, is that it begins to dawn on you that if you really wanted to be free from suffering, if you personally really wanted to be free from suffering, you would wish for the perpetrators of violence and cruelty to enjoy the root of happiness, to understand what causes happiness, and you would wish for them to understand the root of suffering, because then they wouldn't be hurting people. This getting even, you see, this is this is the old-fashioned, stuck way of thinking about things. We are like this. Human beings are like this. But this is an attempt to change that. Wanting to get even just perpetuates the cycle of cruelty. And we can't help it if right now we want to get even. We can't, it's no point feeling ashamed of ourselves and just heaping. You see, that's what we do. We like heap blame on top of blame. But we could at least begin the the insight, I would say, you can't force it, but it does begin to dawn on you that what would really change things is if even uh, the greatest horror story in our life, if those people or that person could truly enjoy the root of happiness and know the root of suffering, that um, the whole cycle of pain would, would end, would de-escalate and would slowly cease to be and that that would spread instead of generation after generation the same cruelty continuing generation after generation something begins to slow down and change and shift and love and compassion begin to grow instead of resentment and revenge 
So then we move on from this enemy, we universalize it to uh, all beings everywhere. If you saw this photograph of the Hubble telescope out in space, it looks out in space and it sees that there there are all these uh, little dots and things, and each one is a galaxy. We don't know what's going on in those particular galaxies. But I think it's naive to think that all those galaxies, all the beings everywhere, have uh, discovered the uh, root of happiness and the root of suffering. There may be a lot of very confused beings out there. There may be galaxies that are in worse shape than ours, (laughs) where the cruelty and violence and the cycle of pain is much more out of control than ours. And there may be galaxies where there's much more space, people realizing their true nature and the true nature of reality, and that the whole thing is much more open and kind and true. But when you think of all beings, you could just start, you know, with uh, maybe Nova Scotia and move out to Canada and North America. You know, you could just start with the globe but you can make it as big as you want. Just that all the beings everywhere are suffering and wish them all happiness and the root of happiness. Okay, so we're going to start with this first practice, starting with ourselves. I'm going to guide it. And then moving on to <coughs> to our list of people that we feel gratitude to. And we'll do that for the longest period, you know, I'll give that more time, because that's the main point, is to actually connect with the heart. This is the beginning of trust in inner strength, is beginning to connect with the heart, beginning to trust in the heart. This is where the inner strength and the trust come from. And then, even though this is somewhat artificial, doing it as a practice, hopefully we can connect with that by just a, like thinking a lot about this person and then taking that feeling once we've felt it and it's a real feeling for us, extending it out to our good friend <coughs> or friends and then extending it further to the neutrals and then to the enemy, which as I say, don't choose an overwhelming situation and then to all beings. So first, arouse the wish, may I be happy, may I enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. Just arouse that feeling of love and kindness towards oneself. May I be happy, may I enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. The eyes can be open or closed. Sincerely, from the heart, wish, may I enjoy happiness and the root of happiness.
You may feel the need to do this for a long time, but at this point I'd like to say that whenever you feel ready, move on to a person or people that you feel gratitude towards and arouse the wish, the sincere wish, may they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And if you want to go back and forth between yourself and this person or these people, that's okay. We'll spend uh, quite a bit of time with this. Actually say their name. By contemplating in this way, may the love and gratitude that you feel for this person or these people, may it expand and grow, may it get stronger. When this feels genuine, when it feels true, not contrived, when you can really feel gratitude and love, radiate that out now to your good friend.
say their name, say their names, and wish that they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And when you feel ready, radiate that out further to people who you feel neutral about. You can say their names, visualize their faces, or just have a general sense and wish that they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. And when you feel ready, extend further to people that you feel have negative feelings toward. You can say their names, visualize their faces. And arouse the wish that they enjoy happiness and the root of happiness. Knowing that this would benefit both of you that you would benefit from this as well as they would benefit from this. feel ready, wish may I be free of suffering and the root of suffering. May this person I love be free of suffering and the root of suffering. And my good friend and neutral people, 
and the one whom I feel negativity toward. May we all be free of suffering and the root of suffering. And keep touching back in on the feeling that you have for your loved one, for yourself, and see if you can spread it out, radiate it out. And then when you feel ready, radiate this sincere wish, this feeling of love and gratitude, this feeling of wishing for beings to enjoy happiness and the root of happiness extended out to all, all beings everywhere. Just have a sense of this feeling of love radiating out, unlimited friendliness radiating out in all directions. And then in this atmosphere of loving kindness and unlimited friendliness, in this atmosphere of Maitri, just return to your regular sitting practice. Just being with the breath as it goes out, labeling your thoughts when they come up. But in this environment of Maitri, do the regular practice.
This concludes Session 4 of Noble Heart.